Chronomids or midges are one of the most important trout food sources. They belong to the order Diptera and they're two winged insects. They have a complete life cycle, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. The adult chronomid looks like a mosquito, except the females don't have that long biting proboscis. So they're a non-biting midge, that's what they are. They come in a variety of sizes and colors. There's over 2,500 species of chronomids found living in fresh and marshy waters of North America. So they come in very small ones and they come in quite large ones and different colors. And because fly, fly color can be discerned by the fish, uh, that's why we tie all these different colors of chronomid pupa. So the chronomid life cycle goes like this. Eggs are laid by uh, females returning to the lake. They dip the tip of their abdomen in the surface film and the eggs sink to the bottom of the lake. And they could be in three feet of water, in 30 feet of water, they could be in 90 feet of water. Those eggs hatch into a worm-like larva, the chronomid larva, which are most commonly maroon or red in color. And that's why we call them blood worms because of their blood red coloration. But other colors of the larvae are green, shades of green and brown. The larvae build little mud tubes at the bottom of the lake, at whatever depth they're in. So it's like a little tube they live in and they stick their heads out and they feed on detritus. The larvae are segmented. They have pro legs, little legs at either end, at the tip and the back end of their, uh, of their larva. And they range in size from an eighth of an inch to well over an inch in length, depending on the species. So these larvae are living in tubes at the bottom of the lake. When they're fully matured, they seal themselves in the tube and transform into the chronomid pupa. The pupa then, when it's fully developed, it usually takes 10 to 14 days for the transformation to occur from that segmented round worm creature, larval stage, into the pupa. When the pupa is fully developed, it breaks out of that old larval case at the bottom of the lake and slowly rises, ascends vertically to the surface of the lake and it's slow. So in 30 feet of water, that pupal ascent could take several minutes. In 70 feet of water, it could take five, six, seven, ten minutes. And the way the pupa gets to the surface is its body releases gases that build up under the pupal cuticle, under the outer skin. And uh, the gas helps raise or elevate that pupa to the surface of the lake. And so quite often chronomid pupa are quite silvery in color and that's that gas that's trapped under the uh, pupal cuticle. So as the pupa rises to the surface of the lake, it finally gets to the surface, a split forms on the back of its thorax and the adult chronomid crawls out, dries its wings momentarily, flies off, goes to shore to mate, and then the females with fertilized eggs come back that evening or the following morning to skim over the surface of the lake, tip of their abdomen in the, in the, in the surface film, and they look like, a, a, they make a little V-wake, so they look like a float plane trying to take off. And they're releasing eggs, and they drop to the bottom, and that life cycle is complete. So trout are eating the larva when they're in their tubes at the bottom of the lake, but they really gorge on the pupa because when there's a pupal emergence, when there's a hatch of chronomids, there's literally hundreds of thousands of them coming up through the water column. And so it's a very easy meal for the pupa to feed on. And for trout and for any fish species, it's all about uh, minimizing the amount of energy required for the greatest amount of food intake. So for the pupa, they're helpless in the water and the fish just open their mouth, suck them in, open their mouth, suck them in, and uh, they get a big meal. So that's the chronomid life cycle. Very important to understand because they are such a significant trout food source. Chronomids can hatch in a wide variety of depth zones, but the most common or the most productive chronomid fishing often occurs in water that's about 20 feet in depth and less. So lots of chronomid fishing is done in 
five feet of water, seven feet, 10 feet, 12 feet of water. So our first line of choice, first tactic to fish chronomids is a floating line and then a chronomid pupa pattern with a swivel above it, about 24 inches above it, and then an indicator that will set at the depth that we want and that will keep it a very precise depth. So the way, what happens when there's a chronomid hatch or uh, when the pupa are coming up to, to hatch is that they break out of the uh, old larvas a tube at the bottom of the lake and they stage at the bottom within a foot of the bottom, within 12 inches of the lake bottom. And they're sitting head up, tail down, wiggling, and they're waiting to ascend. So the trout love to feed on the pupa, regardless of the depth that they're hatching in, they love to feed on them within about 12 inches of the bottom of the lake. So if we're in 12 feet of water, our standard setup would be the chronomid pupa with the, with the floating line and the indicator pegged at 11 and a half feet, six inches off the bottom or 11 feet. And we're just gonna peg it. So, so just as an example, we'll just uh, peg it at 11 feet. So this is a quick release indicator. So now we're, we've got our indicator set up and then we've got our chronomid pupa and we're gonna cast directly downwind because we had a good breeze right now. So we, the pupa are stationary, they're, they're not swimming, they're, they're stationary, just wiggling and they're waiting to, to come up to the water column. So cast out, get our pupa out there. And now the pupa is slowly sinking and it's gonna sit. When it finally settles, it'll be six inches off the bottom because I, we know it's 11, we use our depth sounder, we know the depth we're fishing in. And we've got that indicator now out there and we're just gonna constantly watch that indicator to make sure if it dips down, we know we've got a fish on and then we're gonna set the hook. We had a bite, we're gonna set the hook. Remember when we're fishing with these uh, chronomid pupa, that pupa is tied on with a non-slip loop knot. So that fly is wiggling, just like the real ones are wiggling up and down in the water column. So that's a typical setup that you'd start with chronomids, floating line and a varying length leader with an indicator, depending on the depth you're fishing. So if, again, if we're in 16 feet of water, we'd want about 15 to 15 and a half feet of leader between our indicator and our fly. The same technique would be used if we wanted to fish the chronomid larva or the bloodworm, because the larva are very close, they're in the bottom in the mud water interface. So we hang those chronomid larva six, seven, 10 inches above the bottom and the fish will see them and they'll suck them in, okay? So what happens if we're fishing chronomids? There's a big hatch coming off. We see swallows and night, saw, night hawks dipping them off the water. We see the shucks on the water, but it's 49 feet deep. Well, we do the same thing. We anchor our boat, bow and stern, but we take a full sinking line. The fastest sinking line you've got, like a type six or a type seven, which sink at six or seven inches per second. We tie on a four feet of straight monofilament leader, uh, four or five feet of maybe seven, eight pound. Tie on a chronomid pupa to match the ones that are emerging with a non-slip loop knot. And then we, lower, we clip on a pair of hemostats to our fly. You can clip that onto your fly and then lower this over the side of your boat, letting line out till it hits the bottom. And then we make five or six turns of our reel so that the fly is about a foot off the bottom, hand line it in, and then take off your hemostat. So now you know the depth, and then you just flip that amount of line back out, cast it back out, let it sink to its straight vertical, straight up and down, and you just hold onto the rod, there's no retrieve, and you wait for those fish to come by, they see the pupa, and they grab it, and your rod buckles over and you set the hook. Okay, that's called deep lining, where we're fishing with a full sinking line in deeper water. So they can, remember, chronomids can hatch at all those different depth zones. And when, when they get above about 25 feet in depth, that's when you wanna switch into that full sinking line mode because it's very hard to cast 25, 30, 35 foot leaders with a floating line. Use your sinking line to do the sinking for you. 
when you're also fishing with a, with that sinking line set up, you, you can cast it out at that depth, say it's 40 feet deep, let her sink so it's straight up and down, and then you can start a very slow hand twist retrieve, inching that sinking line straight up. And all you're doing is bringing it straight up through the water column, and the fish will see it rising, and they see it escaping, and they'll grab the fly. So you can let it sit static straight on the bottom, or you can do a very slow, very slow hand twist retrieve, bringing it up through the water column. Floating lines, sinking lines are the way to go for any chronomid uh, fishing technique you'll find on our lakes.